Hello, I'm JW. This time we're going to be looking at the heating systems again, and this time the sort of thing you'll do if you wanted to replace an existing program and thermostat with one of these new Hive or Nest or one of the other manufacturers type of systems. And uh, these are the deals where, although it actually includes a thermostat, the thermostat itself is not actually wired into the system. All you've got is basically a controller box or receiver or heat link or whatever they want to call it, and it's just a single device which wires in and that actually replaces both the existing programmer and also the existing thermostat wiring as well. And that box just communicates with the new thermostat wirelessly, so, so the only wiring is actually just the controller itself. Now we're going to have a look at how you might fit these into a typical system. And one very important point here before we get into that is that if you're going to be fitting one of these things, it's absolutely essential to make sure that the heating system is actually working properly before you start, because if there's some fault and it's broken, just changing the program or whatever is not going to fix those problems unless it happened to be the actual programmer that was defective. But if you've got things like the boiler doesn't work properly or radiator's not heating up or whatever else, simply changing to a new device is not going to fix any of those things. So, of course, you would need to fix those to start with. And the other thing it won't fix is if you've got a system, say, where you can only have heating and hot water, you can't have heating only. Because, again, a lot of systems are actually designed that way, and it's not going to be possible just to change to it by replacing the programmer. You may need to actually change the plumbing and whatever else as well. Now, in the rest of this video, we're going to have a look at the most common types of heating system, and also the deal with the nest and the hive, which are probably the more common items you've got. But bear in mind, this could actually apply to any of those sort of all-in-one type of systems. Obviously, others are available. It's just a question of adapting the wiring as appropriate. And the basic procedures for replacing an existing thermostat and programmer with an all-in-one controller are going to be the same regardless of who made it and how it actually wires in. Now, as I said a moment ago, it's essential to make sure that the heating system you have does actually work. Because, say, if you've got faults on there which, of course, are unrelated to the programmer or thermostat, just changing those items is not going to fix those things. So you do need to actually make sure that the system is working correctly. And I've already done a whole series of videos on the most common types of heating system. And of course you can go and look at those if you haven't seen those already. And also got some of the diagrams here which were used in those previous videos. So again, if the wiring diagrams seem rather confusing or complicated, it's all explained in the previous videos. So certainly worth going and have a look at those first if you haven't seen those already. Now I'll start here. This is a diagram of the wiring for a typical S-plan system. This is one where you've got two valves, one for the hot water, one for the heating. It doesn't particularly matter how many valves you have. What matters here is what we're actually going to be replacing and, of course, what we're going to be installing in its place. On an existing system, it's likely to have some kind of programmer or timer or time clock or time switch or whatever you want to call the thing. And that could range from anything from a fairly modern item to some mechanical old piece from 40 years ago. But ultimately, its function is the same. It takes in a power supply there, we've got marked in the line and neutral. And then it has some outputs which are switched on and off, depending on whether you want hot water or heating, and of course both at the same time in some cases. And then the other item of interest here is the room thermostat, and this is actually wired into the output from the programmer as the heating there, so that uh, for the heating to actually work you need to have the programmer saying the heating is required, and also the room thermostat saying heat is required. And if either one of those is turned off, then of course you won't get any heat. Now, most systems should have a room thermostat already. Of course, there are plenty of systems out there which don't have one. And, of course, if you've got one of those, then anything in these videos relating to the existing room thermostat can be ignored because, of course, uh, you don't actually have that. Now, when you buy your Nest Hive or whatever it is, it's going to come with a couple of items in the box, one of which is the thermostat, which goes on the wall, and the other one is a box which replaces the existing programmer or timer. And it's important to note that the thermostat you're getting does not wire in in any way. It's purely a wireless connection to the main control box. So the procedure here is going to be taking the old room thermostat on the wall and getting rid of it, and also getting rid of the wiring to it. And then the new heat link box, or whatever it's going to be called, is actually going to replace your existing programmer. And that's the thing which will do the switching on and off of the heating and the hot water. Now the diagram here is say for an S-plan, and we can see that there's only two wires that are actually used in the program, which are the terminals 3 and 4 in this case, and that's just for the heating and the hot water to turn on. The off terminals, which are 1 and 2 on this particular example, are not used. And it's not necessary to actually change this configuration. If you've only got two in your existing programmer, then you only need to connect two to your new Nest or Hive or whatever you've got. 
Now, if you've got a different type of his system, here's a Y plan system. This is typically where you've only got a single valve. Then you'll probably find that there are more wires. This one here has say, got uh, three wires there, chart one, three, and four. And again, if that's what you've got and there's no number two used, well, that's fine. That's exactly how the new one is going to be wired up as well. Now, of course, there are some systems which use all four, but those are fairly uncommon. But nevertheless, they do exist. So it's very important before you disconnect anything just to check what you've actually got connected to the programmer. Make a note of those wiring connections, and also, most importantly, which wire connects to which terminal in the old programmer. Now, a lot of them have the same backplate, but plenty of them do not, so you need to identify which one is for, say, heating on, heating off, hot water on, and hot water off, and, of course, if any of those are not actually connected, because if they're not connected, you don't need to connect them. Now, so this is the Y-Plan one, and we've got three wires coming out of it there, so see just highlighted in pink there. And the S-Plan one there, we see we've just got two wires again highlighted in pink. Now we're going to continue on with the S-Plan one, but bearing in mind if you've got the extra wires it's exactly the same. You just need to of course connect any additional wires that you have got. And another thing to look out for is some types of programmer also have additional terminals, which although not connected to the timing part, they're just there to connect two or more wires together. If you have those, then again you're going to need to keep those wires connected together in the same way, because if you don't, something isn't going to work properly once you've finished. Now in terms of the wiring at the actual programmer location, all you're going to do is take the existing wires from the terminals that they're currently in, and then just move those wires onto the new programmer, connecting the same wires to the same terminal. So in the case of this one, of course, we've got the neutral and line there in blue and brown, and then we've got two additional wires coming from three and four, which of course will go to the same terminals in the new device. Now it may be that they're numbered the same, but in many cases they're not going to be. It may have different names for them, but essentially you want to identify what they are in the existing one, which in this case is number three is hot water on, and number four is central heating on, and then just connect those same wires to the same terminals in the new device. So that part of it there is actually pretty straightforward. It's turning off the power, making a note of all the connections you've got, and then just connecting those to the exact same terminals in the new device that you have purchased. Now, if you don't have an existing room thermostat, that is actually the end of the procedure. It really is as simple as that. However, in most cases, you're going to have an existing room thermostat, and it is going to be necessary to do something with that. Otherwise, your new system is not going to work at all, or it may work in ways you did not expect. Now, if you look at this diagram here, you can see the pink items there have been highlighted, and this is actually the part for the heating only. The hot water is just literally connecting up the one wire as before, so no problem there. So here we've got the pink one, and you see when the program is on, terminal 4 is connected to line, and that goes into the wiring centre there, number 4, goes via the existing room thermostat, and then when the thermostat's on, that comes back there to terminal 5 in the centre wiring terminals, and that goes to the heating valve, which then of course will switch on the boiler when the valve opens. Now of course you've bought a new uh, device here, comes with its own wireless thermostat, so you need to get rid of the existing thermostat, and of course that's no longer going to be required. So essentially what you're going to be doing is taking these three wires, again shown here in pink, to the room thermostat, and then just disconnecting them both at the wiring centre and the room thermostat end, and of course the thermostat has gone away. And basically we end up with what we've got here. But of course this is no good, because if you look where the pink line now goes, it comes from the programmer to an empty terminal in the wiring centre, and then the valve is connected to, yes, another empty terminal. So if you just take the thermostat away, this is not going to work ever, because even though the thing is turned on, no power is going to get to the valve. Of course, it's going to do absolutely nothing. So once you've removed the thermostat, you need to actually install a link between the terminals where the thermostat would have originally connected. In this case, it's 4 and 5. Again, terminals on your wiring system may be different, but obviously you need to identify the wires coming from the thermostat. So it's better best of putting a link inside there between 4 and 5 on this example. And again, this will look like that. So again, when the uh, thing is turned on, terminal 4 gets the power, goes through there to terminal 4, and then on to 5. And again, that goes to turn the heating on through the valve. And of course, uh, that will now work as expected. And of course, instead of putting a link there, you could just move the wire over to number 5 like that. The important thing is you're going to have to make some minor adjustment there. Just removing the old thermostat means it will never work. Now, if you're a really cheap person and couldn't be bothered to do the job properly, you could, in theory, just go to the existing manky old thermostat, set it to the maximum temperature possible, and then superglue the knob in place. And yes, the system would, of course, work if you did that. 
But that's not really the point, is it? Because you want to get rid of the manky old thing on the wall that's been there for 30 years, and uh, just doing that would be a horrible, nasty bodge. But nevertheless, that would work. And by putting that link in, you're essentially just saying, well, the old thermostat would be turned on permanently all the time. So when you're finished, all you're going to end up with is something like this. All the components are essentially the same. The only thing you've changed is that the programmer, or the timer, is now your nest or hive box or whatever it is that you've purchased. Again, wiring to that is the same as the previous item. And you've made that minor adjustment inside the wiring terminals there, so that rather than going via the wall thermostat, the heating one now goes directly to the two-port valve. Cylinder thermostat is exactly the same as before, no change there. And of course the boiler connection is exactly the same, pump and everything else, no change to any of that. Let's have a look at some of the wiring for the actual devices themselves. So what we're going to look at here is the Hive wiring. Now the Hive is available in two versions. There's a single channel and a dual channel. Single channel is only really for combination boilers. It only does one thing, as single channel would imply. So that is no good if you're going to be doing hot water as well. So you do not want to be buying the single channel. That is unsuitable. I say it's only going to do the heating. So what you want is the dual channel one. And that's shown here on the right. And we can see it has the terminals there, so neutral and live there, and that's where the permanent supply would connect. And then we've got the four terminals which we've seen previously, which is hot water off, heating off, hot water on, and heating on. Also another term there for any earth wires that you may have. So in terms of installing this one, it's simply a question of installing this plate where the old programmer was, attaching the wires to the appropriate terminals, so definitely going to be uh, line and neutral. We're definitely going to have hot water on and heating on. You may have hot water off if you've got a system which requires that. You may have heating off if it's one of those. Of course, you may not have either because they're not actually needed on all systems. Now, this is actually a fairly standard backplate, and you may find, if you've got a fairly recent existing programmer, that that actually uses the exact same plate. So in some cases, you might not even need to take the plate off the wall. You could attach the new thing to your existing plate. But do check that the wiring terminals are in the correct order, because in some cases they may be different. So that one is actually quite straightforward. You're literally just replacing one thing with another and just moving the wires over to the exact same connections, although bearing in mind, say, numbering of things may be slightly different. Now, the other popular item is the Nest. This being designed for some faraway country does not have quite the same arrangement, and there are a couple of extra things you need to do here, otherwise you find that nothing will actually work. Now, here are the terminals in the Nest, and on the left there we've got the neutral and live, of course, which is where the power will connect, so no particular mystery about that. also has an earth terminal over towards the right there for any earth wires that you may have, although the thing itself doesn't actually require an earth connection. Now the terminals on this are numbered completely differently, and an important point here is to note that these have a common terminal in the centre, and this needs to be connected to live in both cases, Otherwise, the outputs, which are going to be the terminals, say, 1 and 3 for the heating and 4 and 6 for the hot water, won't actually have any power on them, which is fine if you have a system that doesn't require that. But of course, systems in the UK do. So the first thing you need to do here after installing the live and neutral to those terminals is to add a link from live to number 2 and number 5. And this will basically provide power to the two switches inside the device. Now, the Hive device, which we saw previously, has these links, but they're already inside and internal to the device, so you don't need to make them, but they do actually exist inside there, as they do on the vast majority of older programmers. So putting this link in is absolutely essential. If you don't put it in, then it simply will not work. Once you have that link in place, then it's just a question of connecting up the required terminals. You're definitely going to be wanting the hot water on and the heating on. On this particular diagram, they're called Call for Heat and Normally Open, but uh, we can just put the word on next to that. It's the same thing, just different names for the same terminal. So you're definitely going to want those, which is number 3 and number 6. And in some cases, you may need the off terminals, which in this case are the ones marked Satisfied and Normally Closed. Again, of course, if your system requires them. Of course, many systems don't need either or even both of those. So if you've got them, connect them up. If not, of course, they are not required. Now the only thing to note here with the Nest is that it does have two terminals there for 12 volt DC power, and you can connect a twin core cable to this, run that to where you want to put the wall thermostat, and then provide the power to the wall thermostat with that. But bearing in mind that is just for power, you don't have to use that, you can get the sort of plug-in power pack or whatever and use that instead, but if you can use the uh, thing you've got there you can provide power to it. But say that's not required, it doesn't provide any kind of communication, it is purely just a 12 volt DC power supply, 
and that may be convenient if you've got existing wiring in the wall you can use for that purpose. But So you don't have to attach that to make it work as long as you've wired up the other terminals between uh, power there and the numbers 1 to 6 properly. That is pretty much all you need. So that's how you would change to an all-in-one controller, replacing two separate devices, the old timer and thermostat. And the most important thing here is that when you're removing the old timer, I make a good note of which wires connect to which terminal. And most old programmers actually have a little diagram on the back of them which shows you which terminal is which. So after you centre, you make sure that all the wires that go to each terminal are properly identified. And then when you replace them with the new all-in-one controller, you're connecting the things to the exact same ones. Because if you don't, of course, it's not going to work properly, and then you're going to be in a right mess trying to figure out where they used to go. And if in doubt, take pictures beforehand and put bits of tape on the wires and things to make sure they're going to go back in the correct places. And for the hot water side, that's pretty much it. But for the heating side, you need to get rid of the old room thermostat if you have one, which involves, first of all, removing it and its cabling. But most importantly, you need to install a link in the wiring centre, which is effectively the same as setting the thermostat to be on permanently. If you don't do this, your heating will simply never work again, which obviously is not the intended outcome. And other than that, it's pretty straightforward. If you're going to do the uh, Hive one, then it's pretty much just fit it on the wall and it will operate. The Nest one does require those additional links between the line and the two common terminals because they're not actually internal to the device. And again, once you remember to put those in, it will work perfectly. And if you forgot to put them in, all that will happen is it simply won't work at all. So that's it for this time. And until next time, thanks for watching.